Hey Pepper Gang, is Marauders worth playing in 2024? That's the question I hope I can help answer by the time this video is over. You might be a player that touched it in beta and early access launch, but decided to stop playing for multitude of reasons. You might have never played the game and are looking for an extraction game that's not Tarkov, or you're a current player, love this game, and want to convince your homies to play. That's why I'm here to help you all. For those that don't know me, my name is Spicy, and I have been making videos and streaming this game since I picked it up back in the public alpha of May 2022. As a fan of old school weapons in space, sci-fi, and alternate realities, Marauder's lore and setting was a big reason why I pre-ordered it back in May of 2022. Plus, I love extraction games, so this game is a match made in heaven for me. And I have planned on at least seeing this game through 1.0 launch. Being part of an emerging community as a creator is so awesome, and the fact that I was able to host a dev blog with the devs in 2023 was extremely rewarding. Now that said, I've seen this game go from a raw, bare bones foundation full of bugs and issues and just crap to a much more enjoyable experience over a year later. Is it perfect? No, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not. Is it completely done? No, not yet. But is the future bright? I think it is. But in order to talk about the future and where Marauders is going, we gotta go back in time, see where the game started. Some of you guys might appreciate the game more once you've learned where it's come from. Now, at early access launch, Marauders had Asteroid Mine, Terraformer, Spaceport, Penal Colony, Navy Outpost, Merchant Frigate, and the Broken Down Capital Ship as its maps that you could play on. At the time, the loot pool was much smaller, the leaderboard was a massive focus of the player base, breaching was less punishing than it is now, couldn't stack meds and generally the movement and pacing of the game was a lot faster than we see today. The launch was exciting because it was one of the few new extraction FPSs out there like Tarkov and the recently shut down Psycho Frontier. Creators of all sizes covered Marauder's launch and the game got thousands and thousands of downloads. It was quite hype but unfortunately Marauders had a plethora of frustrating bugs such as containers disappearing, raids crashing and gear being lost and of course the game attracted cheaters like any multiplayer FPS on launch. For us addicted to the game though, it was easier dealing with these issues while the game developed knowing the devs would do what they can to fix them. But for many, many gamers, they don't have the time or patience for these issues to be worked out. So the game population did drop over the next couple months. Now my streamer YouTuber hat off me guys, I get it. Lots of us have been burned by early access games, especially in the FPS field. And these issues make you not want to stick around. However, amidst all the issues, a community did form around Marauders because we saw the potential this niche game had and we believed in the process. And as you can see in the Steam charts, every major update since launch has brought back players time after time, so the game is far from dead. It's more like people are waiting for it just to finish development and we'll check it out in major updates. Now at the time, I honestly expected more player retention at early access launch, but looking back, the game was a lot more raw and unrefined than it is today. The drop in players makes a lot of sense. But that game has always had a community to rely on to work out development issues. Well, let's fast forward to the first wipe since launch and the first boss being added, the Red Baron patch. The Red Baron breach fight was pretty exciting, prompting many, many players to download the game for the first time. There were quality of life fixes for bugs, exploits, and more in addition to a change in anti-cheat. Marauders move to combination of Denuvo and manual reviews. Now, pause. Denuvo, scary word for many of you. Relax now, let me clarify this. Marauders only uses the Denuvo anti-cheat, not the anti-tamper, which is what has caused privacy concerns with gamers in the past with other games. Just want to make sure that is clear with you guys. They still do manual review after using that first layer of anti-cheat. It was refreshing seeing a small team at the time recognize that cheaters were a problem on launch and that something had to change. Today, cheaters get flushed out fairly quickly. Compared to other FPS games I have played, I run into cheaters a lot less than other games and Marauders and the community is pretty quick to report them through Discord, clips, and more. No FPS multiplayer game will be cheater free unfortunately, but saying Marauders has a cheater problem today would be a lie. It's much more rare today seeing a cheater than we did back in early access launch. In comparison, I have already reported more cheaters in my first week of the latest Tarkov wipe than I have the last few months playing Marauders. Besides anti-cheat changes, new boss, more weapons got added to the game, while current ones got rebalanced. Daily contracts were also gotten rid of, and end-rate contracts were added. 
which was a welcome change to questing. Throughout the Red Baron Wait, we received four hot fixes focusing on quality of life and more bug fixes. Those patches aren't sexy like content patches and don't attract new players, but they are necessary for success and player retention. Now, during this period, custom attachment for ships was removed and replaced with the current ship store with pre-made ships. I honestly believe this replacement is just a placeholder for future ship customization. Now let's fast forward to Spring 2024, the Colony Cruiser Wipe and update happened. It was Marauder's biggest patch yet and introduced a new Colony Cruiser map, a new tournament system, explosive barrels and cans got added to maps, space salvaging was added for destroyed pots and loot, throwables like flashes, grenades, smokes were added, VoIP was added, the first secret locations in the game got added, first ever scopes, several new guns, and many, many, many fixes. This patch was massive, and combined with Twitch drops, the game pop grew. The game was starting to feel more complete with all this content added. Also, the wipe wasn't as popular as launch, but the core community did grow solely due to all the content this patch brought. Also, by the way, guys, throughout this video or afterwards, if you want to read more about specific patches, they're linked down below in the description, starting with the latest Guild Wipe patch notes. Now, the next two updates are, in my opinion, have been the most controversial updates in the game, and the point where the game direction changed quite a bit. Not for the worse, for the better, in my opinion. The excavation update brought a new map, Mining Frigate, and the second boss, the Warden, the Penal Colony boss. Marauders also changed matchmaking. Instead of being auto-selected on your ping, the UI was changed where you could select your region based off your ping. Before this change, Marauders players would deal with issues like never finding matches, entering raids late, and randomly getting sent to one specific region of servers. Since this change, matchmaking has been a lot smoother for everyone. Now, the most controversial change this update, which is still around today, is the delay of escape jump gates, also known as your extract gates. Instead of seeing them at the start of matches, you had to wait a timer for them to show up or trigger them to show up via a button in each map. This was added to the game to prevent people leaving at the start of raids, causing the rest of the raid to be fairly dead. The timer has changed from 15 minutes to currently 5 minutes, but I will dig into that later on this video and where I think this mechanic is going. At the time, dart weapons were also added, healing got a major rework as well. From that day, we could never sprint and heal again. Heals got proper animations and sounds, and bleeding, a new mechanic got added as well. These changes did turn off a lot of the current player base at the time because it slowed the game down much more than it was. But with small tweaks since then, most of the Marauders community and new players have been coming in seem content where healing is. When the excavation update dropped, the devs mentioned that they felt the game was moving way too close to being a movement shooter and less hardcore from the original vision for the game which is why the changes for healing and the extract gates happen. Now, I got a chance to see a graph the devs shared during our dev blog, showing where they want Marauders to be in regards of difficulty. As you can see in this graph, they want to lean closer to escape from Tarkov, but not too far over. At the time, they felt Marauders was too far over on the other side, on the arcade side of things, and that's why they made those changes. Now, you can get an idea where the dev team wants Marauders to be by the end of development according to this graph. The excavation update also brought a change to updates where the devs wanted to patch the game every two weeks with a larger content update every eight weeks. Up until the guilds update, the team did stay true to this update pattern, but I will discuss why there was a delay in the guilds update here in a bit. Last thing I will mention from the excavation update period, we got the first pod variants with attack pods and heavy breach pods. Space combat and ships have not been touched too much in the last year and it's one of the areas Marauders still needs work on. However, the pod variants were a nice change at the time, along with the rework of the rust bucket interior. Combined with changes to breach locations, breaching in general is not what it was at launch. You're not going to get spam breach by leaderboard chasers in today's Marauders build. Breaching is a strong, unique feature Marauders has from other games, and one of its challenges has been balancing it. Moving on from excavation update to the next major update of wipe, the plunder update. Both Excavation and Plunder updates didn't attract many new players like Colony and Red Baron did, but I believe these two updates brought a lot of needed fixes, balancing quality of life changes, which have helped in the long term. The Plunder update brought a new game mode, the Raider mode, which continues to be refined today. Raider mode is a separate 10 minute instance with no space portion where you spawn into a map with a crappy kit, and you can only play this mode solo with a cooldown between runs 
and the goal is to bounce back from bad runs, learn the maps, and gain some easy loot. Some of the Marauders community has always asked for a solo queue, but with the community being on the smaller end, the devs made the solo mode instead as a supplement to the main mode, not a replacement. They don't want to split the player base into different queues, so Raider mode was a compromise, which has helped player retention today. New players can still gather decent loot and learn the game in a more risk-free setting. The Plunder update also brought a new AI called the Loot Goblin and his massive Freebooter backpack. More guns were added throughout the swipe, as well as more attachments for guns. The Plunder Wipe brought med stacking to the game, thank god, and a bunch of new scrappable items that give you an insane amount of materials. In addition, a new type of loot item was added called Blueprints, which give you a temporary amount of new crafts for specific items in your stash, or you can just sell the blueprint for big money. The Plunder update also brought the first ever free weekend for the game, where many people tried Marauders for the first time and have stuck around since then. It was a big success, even though they were competing with a current Tarkov wipe and a few other updates from major games, but we still attracted new players and we hope to see more of these down the road. Lastly, the leaderboard got officially removed during this Plunder update period and replaced with tournaments with deadlines and loot cosmetics for rewards. This was a welcoming change for majority of the community. As you can see, a lot of content has been added since EA launch. Major mechanics like extra gates, healing, and breaching have been reworked, and constant balancing for PvP has happened since. Throughout the Plunder update, it felt like momentum was truly building for Marauders with its update schedule, but dark times came. The guilds update delay. Expected to drop in October 2023, we didn't see it until December. Team 17, the publisher for Marauders, has undergone a major hit financially this past year, affecting Marauders' development. The company went through restructuring, and even though small impact games had the patch ready to go, there wasn't much they could do since the publisher was having issues. As a result, player retention suffered those last few months, and the Marauders' population dropped to the low hundreds consistently. But there was hope, and the team launched a public test server in late November, this was a brand new feature Marauders that's created for the game, which I think all multiplayer FPS games should have, and it allowed for the player base to test out the guild's update before it was officially live and marketed. And boy, am I glad we got a test server. There were several game-breaking issues that showed, and luckily, the team was able to fix them before officially launching the guild's update in December 2023, and as a result of the two testing periods for that patch, this guild's update has been one of the smoothest, if not the smoothest, update and wipe I have played for this game. So, what came with the guild's update? Guilds, of course. You can now create a guild of 50 people, help your guild level up your guild hideout, a separate game where we can PvP and practice with your guildmates, and the guild trader was also added. The guild's update is the first of several to come out that will flesh out guild tournaments, the trader, more additions to the hideout, and more. The guild's update also brought another map, the Planet Killer Base, the largest map in the game so far. The UI got a major rework too, making Raider Mode easier to see, and other changes like a killed crew chat. Raider Mode got changed a bit to include NPCs and more players, and traders no longer rotate. They are all available at once, a massive change welcomed by many. XP also got reworked where you get rewarded more from Zero to Hero quests and boss kills. Finally, we can finally add or remove attachments and raid. A massive quality of life change that we've been asking since Alpha. Shotguns got buffed where they are usable by themselves finally too and not neglected. And the AI has been readjusted where they aren't as aggressive and have a wider range of behavior such as looting patrolling areas. Now, since the update, the community has retained new players that have heard of the update through word of mouth, maybe YouTube. But this patch hasn't been marketed heavily. In fact, most of the patches since Colony Cruiser haven't, and I think, out of pure speculation, said the dev team wants to refine the game a lot more before making a marketing push. Marketing a game that is unpolished, kind of what we saw at Early Access launch, can create a very negative image fairly quickly. First impressions are everlasting. I also think the publisher issues might not be completely resolved and can still affect marketing right now since it's their department. Part of the reason I wanted to recap all these updates is so you guys know the facts of what happened since Early Access launch and not necessarily believe speculation. Many people seem to hold on to first impressions of Early Access games at launch and they always refer to those even though the game has come a long way since then. So, I've covered all the big changes since EA launch up to now, beginning of 2024. What is the current state of Marauders? Well, it's healthy and the future is promising as long 
as long as, and this is key, the dev team can get back to its previous update schedule of fixes every two weeks and larger patches every eight weeks. Now, not all is done and dandy like I said before. Major changes still need to be done, and I believe they will happen after the guild's updates fleshed out. Ship combat and ships in general still need love. People still mainly run rust buckets these days, I do, and they don't see a benefit to running more expensive ships. Many of us OGs also miss the original ship customization, like putting a nuke on your interceptor. So I hope that type of ship customization makes a return down the road. Like I said, I can see that ship store as a placeholder for now. Now I'm not sure where the team is going to take ship PvP to. It's one of the least touch features for right now, but it's not ignored. I just think SIG has priorities with other parts of the game before we see major changes to ship combat and PvP. I know many people bought Marauders for the space portion alone and breaching, so I hope we get changes in this field sooner rather than later. I know ideas like ship insurance have been suggested in the official Discord, along with many others, and the devs do listen to the community and will listen to constructive ideas. Going back to the extract gates, they currently sit at a 5 minute timer which in my opinion makes the timer obsolete as well as the gate transmitters and the buttons and all the maps that they have added. Originally, these timers were never supposed to be in the game and they were brought in to help control the pacing of the game. The devs wanted to combat the problem of highly skilled players spawning in, breaching ships immediately, killing lots of players, then quickly leaving rinse and repeat, which didn't help with new player retention. Since the gate timer was added along with the removal of the leaderboard, this issue doesn't really exist anymore, but the 5 minute timer and buttons feel very obsolete now. They might as well not be there. The dev team has done the pull on the Discord in the last month in regards to extract gates, the buttons, and the options what to do with them. I can see a change to the extract happening soon as a result of this. I personally thought the 10 minute timer was fine and it felt like we had a reason to enter maps to press the extract button, get some interactions in there whether they were positive or negative, but I'm not sure where the team is going from here. Time will tell what happens with extract gates, no pun intended. I also think a quest rework needs to happen. The Zero the Hero questline is extremely linear and after you do it once, you're likely not to do it again. As someone that's played every wipe, I've only done Zero the Hero twice. One completely and one kind of halfway and I was over it. Pretty much every time I play now, it's for PvP and I'll proceed to level 50. The devs have tweaked certain missions on it to make it less tedious. You won't have to rely on map RNG as much as you used to at launch and they have also made more missions more rewarding with XP. However, I think it's too basic of a quest system. I personally have suggested a few times having a quest line for each faction and an alternate reality where war is breaking out and pirates slash marauders are taking advantage of this war torn environment. They would most certainly take up mercenary quests from different factions that they paid out well. I think this is where quest lines can open up and they would allow marauders to align themselves with specific factions for the benefit of more items available for purchase from them. Perhaps if you align with a certain faction, do their quest line, you lose favor with other factions, almost like a karma type system. If you guys see what I'm saying, I just want more questing to be more fleshed out, not so linear. I think they can look at Tarkov and take a lot of inspiration from that. At the end of the day, many players are not a fan of the zero to zero quest line alone, and they only do it to have something to do in raid. It's not a great system. A quest rework is definitely needed in this game to help with player retention and its future. Now, progression in mind, let's discuss prestige. Prestiging has not been touched since EA launch, and I think it honestly might be one of the last major updates we see before 1.0. The waters appealed to me and many others when they were announced to the public because they promised a non-wiping extraction FPS game upon launch, a vision they still want to stick to today. They want players to get that wipe hype feeling on their own through a self-wipe process called prestiging. As of now, prestige is readily available at level 50, and all you got is a couple little tokens for permanent stash space expansion and new cosmetics. It's cool, but not really worth resetting all your progress and trader rep to zero. As of now, prestige is just a fun challenge to give yourself or your content creator like myself, you do it to have something to do on stream. Now, I think many of Marauder's changes to traders XP, economy, and loot table are leading to making prestige less punishing and more worth it. As of now, in January 2024, Marauders has never been easier to get money, loot, and XP. This is the fastest I have ever progressed through the game, and I feel like I can make the most money per run that I have ever been able to do. Combined with the accessibility of good loot and raider mode, once you know the maps, 
it's very easy to gather what you need in Marauders than ever before. People have been asking to nerf the loot table, not make it as easy to find the best items. At the start of the PTS for guilds, I was really concerned that loot was too easy, good items were too easy to purchase early on in the traders, and I felt XP was way too easy to gain. However, after some thought, I think I see what Small Impact Games is doing. Your speculation right here. But I think the point of these changes is so players don't feel as punished for prestiging and feel like they can regain all that loot fairly easy after prestiging, which is a step in the right direction. Prestiging needs to be worth doing, rewarding, and exciting if Marauders is to succeed past 1.0 and maintain a healthy player base down the road. Right now, it feels like the puzzle is incomplete because we just don't have all the pieces, but I can start to see the big picture. I hope we see changes to the prestige system in 2024. 1.0 launch was always predicted to be towards the end of this year, and if SIG can get back to a normal update schedule, we might be sniffing a final, more complete product by the end of 2024. So I gave you the recap since early access launch, you got an idea where the game is today, and where it's going in the near future. The dev team continues to be involved with the community, listens to feedback, and has made necessary changes to improve the health of the game. Is the game worth getting? Yes. Yes, it is. The community and game have pushed through tough periods of delays, major mechanic changes, dropping game population, but yet it's still here. And the direction is going seems more clear than before. Plus, the game goes on sale regularly with major updates. With its current stand and content, you can definitely get your money's worth. Get it today for the first time. I guarantee you're not going to be running into the plethora of issues some of us dealt with a year ago. It's a much smoother experience. And if you're a former player, you played a year ago and maybe dropped it, maybe it's time for a re-download. You might have more fun than you think. You already got the game. Rogers is not done, and I still think this game hasn't hit its peak yet. The boys in the kitchen have been cooking, and it's starting to smell pretty damn good. You don't want to miss out on this fancy meal. I appreciate you guys watching this far. I know it was a long one. I hope that helped answer questions you might have gotten. If not, drop them below or swing by my live stream where I play a variety of survival and extraction games like Marauders. Thank you guys for watching this far. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you want more Marauders content, I got plenty of videos to watch in this playlist.